I'm hugely honored to receive this award and to know that so many children around the world love The Crayon Man because the book means a lot to me and not just because I was lucky enough to tell Edwin Binney's story. Each time I read it, I'm reminded of two important things. Nature is a colorful inspiration and we need to remember to go outside and really look. And if we persevere, we can imagine and create anything. The Crayon Man is a story about an entrepreneur. It resonated with me because my dad had a knack for listening and making what people needed. He showed me that you should never take no for an answer and go out into the world and be the best that you can be. He gave me courage to keep being creative, to be a leader, and to take a punt. I came to write this story by chance. I was looking for a topic for a book I would write as part of an online writing course. My son and I were watching Sesame Street, and we saw a video of the crayons in a myriad of bright colors, and they were spewing out of the sorting machine. I suddenly remembered the joy of drawing with Crayola crayons. I'd been given a treasured box of 64 crayons when I was a child, and one that had the sharpener in it. And I wondered, what was the story here? Who had created these crayons? And I set off to find out. Once there was a man who saw color everywhere. He noticed the yellow-orange petals of the black-eyed Susans in his garden. He marveled at the rich scarlet-red tones of the cardinal's feathers. He admired the deep blue greens of the waves in the sea. Color made him really, really happy. But all day long at work, all he saw was black. Black dust, black tar, black smoke, black ink, black dye, black shoe polish. His name was Edwin Binney, and he was an inventor. He lived in a beautiful house in Greenwich, Connecticut, near the sea. He was known for bringing in bouquet of vibrant, colorful flowers to inspire his team. In the early 1900s, children drew mainly with slate and chalk. It seems almost unimaginable today. What must it have been like? Alice, Edwin's schoolteacher wife, told him that what people needed were bright, durable, non-toxic crayons to use in schools. So Edwin listened, and Edwin invented, until finally, in 1903, he created the first eight Crayola crayons in a small green box sold for only a nickel. As a picture book editor and Montessori teacher, I feel like I have an affinity with Irma Black and her appreciation for innovative childhood education and the art of a picture book. I love that so many teachers and librarians took the time to encourage the children who voted for this award to look closely and think critically about all the wonderful books on the shortlist, and to discover how together the words and pictures make a whole larger than the parts. It's also really special that this award gives children a voice in the discussion about what makes a standout picture book. I know they'll tell it how it is. As an author of an international background, it's doubly wonderful that the children in so many different countries voted for The Crayon Man. Thank you. I think Edwin Binney would have been really happy to know that children everywhere really do like to draw in color. When I first wrote the book, I had a vision for the pictures. I could clearly see the shift from black and white at the beginning of the story to more and more colors by the end of the book. Edwin starts out working with black all day long in his carbon black factory, and as the book progresses, he succeeds in inventing the first colorful eight Crayola crayons. I spend a lot of time poring over historical photographs of Binney's house, his family, and the time period, the 1904 World's Fair, the Crayola workers, and the factory. Since The Crayon Man is a true story, I felt we had a responsibility to accurately depict Binney's story. But when Stephen Salerno added his pictures to my words, something magical started to happen. The story's world was no longer 2D words on the page, but now 3D. But more than this, to my vision of the pages changing as readers thumbed through the book, cumulatively accruing increasingly vibrant colors, Stephen added a sense of time, place, and wonder. He managed to capture the spirit of Edwin Binney, the man, and his personal journey as an inventor. When you pick up a printed picture book, it looks so polished and seamless. It's difficult to imagine the numerous stages that have happened prior to this one, the decisions about every little detail. What word to use here? What perspective and imagery will best convey this moment in the story? Where should the page tones go for maximum impact? 
What should the design of the fact boxes look like so that they don't interrupt the narrative? What tone of blue pigment did they have in the 1900s? The making of a picture book is truly a team effort. I'm so grateful to Stephen Salerno for his fabulous, evocative illustrations. I would like to say a big thank you to my editor at Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, Ann Ryder, and my agent, Victoria Wells Arms, for helping to make this book such a success. Binny was a visionary inventor and generous philanthropist, and it's been an honor to tell his story and to connect with his family through this book. And of course, a big thank you to my family and friends near and far for the big part you've played in the colorful reel of my life to this moment. The Crayon Man is a story about looking to nature for inspiration. My mom always encouraged me to go spend time adventuring outside. In these times where many children are disconnected from the outdoors, I hope my book will inspire them to go outside and rediscover nature. Children have a natural sense of wonder, creativity, and curiosity, just like Binny. They are, after all, the ones who will be the inventors and artists and who knows what professions of the future. We need them. Let us have the courage to allow children to have the freedom to just be, to go outside, and to reconnect. I'm absolutely thrilled to win this award. Let's all pick up a crayon, doodle, and invent something. Thank you.